say happy Halloween. It's a, it's a beautiful fall day, and I think it'll be a lot of fun with trick-or-treating tonight with the kids. So uh, I think we got lucky on that one. Um, you know, welcome to our first uh, Lunch and Learn for the school year. And, and it occurred to me that uh, there's probably several people in here, this is their first Lunch and Learn, and maybe not know why we do these things. So let me just go through that real quick. Uh, one, maybe you'll get a chance to meet someone you don't know, okay, first of all. Uh, second thing, it's an opportunity for me just to share what's happening across the organization. Uh, to the best that I can, and, and it's probably more happening than I, I share. Uh, so the third part becomes just as important. Ask me questions. If there's something I don't cover or something you're interested in, just ask me. Uh, as the purpose for that is I'd rather just put the information out there than deal with rumors. All right, so if there's something going on and, and you don't know what it is, uh, there's really no topic uh, that we can't cover. Uh, if I can't answer it, I'll tell you I can't answer it, and I'll tell you why I can't answer that. Uh, but for the most part, uh, uh, that's why we have these things. It's really for you to get to meet people and for us to just clear the air, make sure uh, everyone's abreast of what's happening with what I think is a wonderful organization. So with that, uh, there are a couple of key folks uh, who tend to interact with almost everybody in the organization that are new to us. So I just wanna take a moment and make sure they stand and wave so you know who they are and why they're here. Uh, so our Assistant Director of Human Resources, Hannah Messner, where are you, I saw you. Yeah, so that's Hannah. <laughs> <clears throat> Our supervisor of facilities, uh, Tom Calvario, uh, who's new, okay. Um, our guest relations uh, down the front desk, uh, Hannah Pasquiolo. <laughs> and one of our new security officers uh, who also manages the front desk is Aaron Stallings. So <laughs> <clears throat> and there are other new folks too, but I want to introduce those folks because the, everyone, they cross paths of all organizations, and, uh, and there's probably too many other new people in here to introduce, so my apologies for that. Uh, let me talk about what we're trying to do down the front desk, because it's a little different than in the past. Uh, so uh, in, in, we started out with contracting for security issues, uh, and last year we brought Willard on board, so Willard's now a permanent employee. So Aaron's also now a permanent employee, okay? So he's not a contractor, he's actually part of the MCIU family. Um, so we have two folks working security primarily. Uh, Willard will be our primary person during the day, and Aaron will be our evening, afternoon and evening person. Uh, really, when you look at our organization, uh, our buildings open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday all the time until 9 p.m. Uh, Monday and Friday, we typically only open the building to 6. A couple variations to that. Uh, so on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Aaron will always be our night, you know, evening night shift person. Um, and on Monday and Friday, you know, he'll be kind of uh, early morning, afternoon, and into the early evening uh, shift. Uh, and then Willard will be obviously our primary person who's like seven to three every day. Okay, so that's a little bit of change from the past. We also want to make that vegetable area, but vegetable, not vegetable, uh, but <laughs> between the front door and the second door, the security area, security only. All right, so it'll be a security area. And so to get through to the building, you'll have to get through that second door. Once you're through that second door, uh, then Hannah becomes our guest relations person. Uh, so she'll greet our guests and make sure our guests have a positive experience here. So that, that's really the logic what we're trying to do here. We have a temporary station set up there, uh, you know, outside the elevators in front of the, the staircase. That will become a permanent station once the uh, uh, vendors get a chance to set that up. So hopefully sometime here in the next couple of weeks, you'll see some construction down there making that temporary setup a, a permanent setup. So in case you're wondering what's happening in the front door, that, that's uh, the new plan there. Uh, a couple other things going on. The, um, I want to cover some of the major initiatives that uh, as an organization we're working on. Uh, and again, these are the new, mostly the new things, uh, not the hundreds of things that we do all the time. Uh, we're putting a lot of time and energy into workforce investment. Um, the, a couple changes this year. Uh, Ke Kendall Glauner has moved from the uh, Office of Professional Services to the Office of Student Services and working with Kyle Longenecker to lead up some workforce investment issues. Okay. The idea is to help those children in schools, I don't say children, uh, young adults, uh, typically teenagers, uh, who uh, typically have the difficulty finding employment, find employment. Uh, so um, you know, they, that organization or that staff has moved to the second floor uh, which was formerly occupied by the TAC folks, uh, who have now moved to the fifth floor. And I'll cover some change facility issues later on. Uh, uh, but hopefully we'll see uh, more teenagers coming into the building as we help them uh, find employment. Uh, likewise, uh, we were, we're looking at a number of grants that we were applying for 
right now to expand that initiative. Uh, we have a grant out with the state. Actually, uh, um, that's hopefully we'll hear sometime uh, in the coming weeks where we stand with that uh, to expand that program. And then there are a number of other grant opportunities coming out from the state uh, that we will be pursuing as well. Uh, so uh, career, uh, career to work uh, is a very uh, popular thing right now in Harrisburg with the politicians. Uh, so they're putting more money into that area and we will obviously pursue that and try to expand that program that we already have started. So, so that's a, a major initiative. Uh, mental health is a, is a huge issue this year. Uh, rightfully so, we've seen the number of uh, abuse cases, the number of racial incidents, we've seen self-harm, we've seen guns. Okay, so all those issues are re we're really lumping together in the mental health uh, and trying to address those issues as schools all across the Commonwealth are trying to address those issues. Uh, one of the ways we're trying to address it is we've, um, through the Office of Student Services, we've been working on for a while getting a license to provide um, mental health and behavior support services. Uh, as every time we get close to having it finalized, we're told one more step, one more step. Um, so we're down to really next couple of days, I think we'll get that license. Uh, be surprised if it goes much further. Uh, it's a bureaucracy. Uh, and so there's always one more step to accomplish in order to get that license. Uh, hopefully we'll have that license really soon. Uh, I'm counting on before the winter holidays. Uh, that will allow us to then start serving children with mental health needs. Uh, would be trying to uh, recruit and employ um, mental health therapists to go into classrooms uh, to help those children who currently are eligible for mental health services but don't have access to mental health services because there's not enough people to do that kind of work. Uh, so we hope to be active in that area really soon. Uh, that will be an expansion of uh, hopefully, right now we know there's about 85, 90 children on a waiting list uh, that can get services immediately. Um, once we can start employing people to deliver those services. We're um, <clears throat> active in a, in, a, in a software program called Social Sentinel. So right now we're the state provider uh, for this software. What this software actually does is it scans social media posts, public social media posts, uh, not private social media posts. Uh, and uh, what we know is that kids who are doing harm to themselves or harm to others usually post something on social media before they actually do it. Um, and so a lot of times those goes un, unknown. Uh, this software allows us to, not, allows this company to scan any public postings. And if it finds threatening behavior or self-harm behavior or drug behavior, it's able to identify where that uh, conversation is coming from. Then it sends an alert to that school district and says, hey, heads up, we're hearing this chatter on social media you might want to take a look at it before something happens. Um, so we're the state sponsor for that uh, software. Uh, so any school district in Pennsylvania who purchases that uh, comes through MCIU. Uh, so that's just one of our tools that we're trying to employ to address mental health issues. The, um, there's a school safety grant that's out there. Uh, if you heard about that, uh, it was available to school districts in two forms, a part A and a part B. Uh, intermediate units were not eligible for Part A, uh, all, only school districts were. Uh, those funds are being released um, as we speak uh, to school districts. Uh, Part B funds, which intermediate units were able, were, were allowed to be, uh, uh, submit a grant. Uh, we, we submitted that grant. We won't find out till probably um, late winter, early spring at best. Uh, we uh, are running a grant in a consortium of intermediate units where we are the lead intermediate unit. Uh, if we get that grant, we will provide training to other intermediate units and then ultimately to school districts on threat assessments. Uh, so uh, when a school district comes across a potential threat, uh, we can assess that threat to see if it's a real threat or if it's something other than that. Uh, so we'll be training people to do that. Um, uh, so we're excited about that opportunity. Uh, but we won't, again, we won't know that for a while. So a number of things in mental health. Uh, and then on the drug service side of mental health, we're growing. Uh, we're hoping to open uh, new classrooms over at 1605. We already have, we built, we started with one intensive emotional support class. We went to a second intensive, uh, this is for elementary, this is for young children, by the way. Um, went to a second intensive emotional support class and we're looking to open a third um, intensive elementary emotional support 
And that's not mm -hmm. good news. I mean, it's good news that we're providing those services, but the fact of the matter is there's very young children with significant mental health issues. That's not good news. Uh, but as, as a society continues to uh, um, go the direction that it's currently going, we'll hopefully continue to respond with services uh, as needed. Because, we have, because we're seeing a growth of 1605, we still are having conversations about what to do with that building. Uh, I think the answer is clear. We're gonna, we're gonna renovate the building. That's my recommendation to the board. I still gotta get the board to approve it. Uh, what the board has approved is for us to uh, go out and put, put uh, what, what's called bids together. Uh, and I do think the board will ultimately approve it. Um, we, so put the bids together. We're in the process of putting bids together uh, to put a new roof on the building, fix the HVAC system, fix the windows and doors, make it ADA compliant, um, and I'm probably missing some other things there too, fix the parking lot. Uh, so all that we hope is going to be around an $8 million, $9 million project. Um, I know it just keeps creeping up, Stan. I, 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 Stan always keeps it down, like keeps going up. Uh, that's how it works. Um, the, uh, I um, don't know where the final costs are going to come up, but we'll put those bids on the street. Uh, the, and then the board will have to choose to award those bids or not. It looks like timing wise, that, that decision will be made in February. Um, and then if, uh, I think that will go well. Um, and then if that, those bids are awarded in February, we'll be starting construction slash renovation shortly thereafter, uh, possibly as early as March, April. Uh, we'll have a construction management firm that will work, work with the staff at 1605 to plan that out in terms of minimal impact to instruction. Uh, so there's a company who does that for a living and they know how to, they do it well. Uh, so we'll be able to start construction with kids in the building, but minimizing uh, the disruption during the instructional day. And of course the summer would be the bulk of the construction. Uh, so uh, hopefully we'll get that accomplished uh, and get that started this school year. Construction on Lafayette Street. Um, we don't have control over that. That's a PennDOT project. Um, and just keep everyone apprised, apprised what's happening. Eventually they're going to open, you see they've paved it now, uh, right side of our facility. It goes all the way down Lafayette Street. Uh, that will soon uh, be open. Uh, sometime around the winter holidays, they're gonna flip that. No, the traffic will move from the original side of Lafayette to the new expanded paved side, and then they'll tear up the other side. Uh, and that will be a much more um, timely project because all the utilities run on the other side of the street. So that's what we'll be placing the water lines and electric lines. Um, so traffic on Lafayette Street is not gonna get any better anytime soon. Uh, that project will last over a year. Uh, so we'll be doing with uh, barrels and construction on Lafayette Street uh, for at least another year, another year and a half uh, before it's completely done. Um, there's, you know, some minimal conversation about our parking lot, uh, you know, uh, for those of you who are kind of new to the organization, uh, there's a plan to actually cut our parking lot in half or in a third uh, by putting a road connecting Barbados Street. Um, that just keeps sitting out there. They've done some preliminary testing, but other than that, we haven't heard from them much. Um, I do believe that's actually ultimately going to happen. We just don't know when. Not on the fast track at this point. Uh, but it doesn't mean I won't get a phone call tomorrow and say construction trucks are rolling in on Monday. Um, I, I, PennDOT does some, sometimes operates like that. Uh, but right now, we don't have any timeline for any major construction uh, in our parking lot. Uh, but again, that can change at a moment's notice. As far as this building, uh, we talked about um, workforce investment folks moving down to the second floor. Uh, TAC members up on the fifth floor. Okay, the, the construction over in the business office appear, you know, most of that's 99% complete, if not 100% complete. Uh, really, the next stage, what we want to do is then uh, address that space on the first floor uh, by the security area. Uh, ultimately, I think the plan is to move the workforce investment group down into that area. So there's access to outside clients coming into the building. Uh, there's conversation about some, uh, some, uh, uh, partner organizations coming into that space as well. A lot of that's still in flux. Uh, and I don't think anything's going to happen. I know anything, nothing's going to happen here the rest of this calendar year. Uh, so we'll take a look at that probably in the spring. Um, so we'll, we'll, the current setup we'll, we'll maintain, uh, you know, for the you know, next few months. 
eventually when workforce investment does move to the first floor, uh, then we'll most likely move the, um, the lab on the fourth floor, uh, the search shown disabilities down to the second floor. Uh, therefore, all students coming into the building will be either on the first or second floor. Right, so uh, that's kind of plan A, subject to change, uh, but that's kind of where we're headed right now. Okay, um, we've got 16 you know, five to deal with, uh, pride, you know, has taken up a lot of time, um, and we're just not ready to commit to the first floor yet. Um, let me pause, uh, yeah, because I ran, a, I covered a lot of information, I still got some more to go. I'm moving quick pace, but um, Oh, you want to save time for questions. Let me take questions now. I see, yes, question on from online. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll re I'm going to repeat the question, <laughs> just so anybody heard that. Uh, if, if the parking lot's actually, you know, cut in, in be two thirds, one third, uh, then what will, is there, and we will lose some parking spots. Uh, is there a plan for additional pay, uh, parking spaces? Uh, we are in that conversation about that uh, we're, you know, with uh, the garage, the two garages are here locally. Uh, having uh, when, because since this is a state project supported by the, uh, I guess by the, the borough, I guess it's safe to say, uh, then we've had the conversation that in exchange, when we have those three, four or five days where we need additional spots, will you give us spaces in the, in the parking garages? Uh, those conversations have not been finalized, uh, but certainly we are aware of that and making an effort to acquire additional parking spaces on those limited days when we max out our lot. Uh, yeah. Tina. Right. Yeah, I call two thirds, one thirds is probably even, it's probably not even that percentage. Uh, so that what, we're, what we're talking about is that third lot. Um, is where it would be cutting through. Okay, so our first lot and our second lot would be untouched. Okay, so it's that third lot that doesn't get used a whole lot. Uh, and then we will lose, I think, what is it, 20, 30 spaces um, in that third lot. Again, non, uh, right now that's a, that's a plan. We've had limited or hardly any activity whatsoever from PennDOT on that plan. Uh, so we could be, uh, in my estimation, and another couple of years away from that. Um, but there is activity, which is a first that we haven't seen in the past. They've been talking about this for a while now. Um, other questions or anything I covered so far? Okay. Let me just take a look at my notes. Um, okay, so Harrisburg, the, um, <clears throat> not a whole lot happening, it's an election year. So General Assembly is officially done with their work. Um, you know, I'm not sure what they accomplished, but they're done. The, um, and the way it works, since this is an election year, uh, any legislation that was in process uh, for the past two years is now officially dead. Uh, so everything will have to be restarted again in January. Uh, so really nothing happening in Harrisburg. Um, all, all the General Assembly's running, the, the House representatives running for re-election. Uh, some senators for re-election, of course, the governor's running for re-election. Uh, regardless of your political persuasion, I just encourage you to vote, okay? Uh, take an opportunity to go out next Tuesday and, and, and please vote. Uh, yeah, just uh, the lack of vote, I think, is a, is a bigger problem in this country than uh, uh, the results of the vote sometimes. Uh, so I encourage you to do that. Uh, other than that, not much to report on uh, government relations uh, at this stage. Uh, we do have a new board member. Uh, seems like I report this every time we get together. Uh, we had a massive turnover there in the last year or so. Uh, and then things were stable, and we lost our woman from Pottstown resigned. We now have a new member from Pottstown who has not yet joined us. Uh, the, the the person is uh, no, we we has worked with the IU in the past, so it's a, it's a positive. Uh, we anticipate another supportive board member uh, coming from Pottstown. Uh, she will be uh, taking place uh, her first board meeting at our new, uh, December board meeting, right? November board meeting. I'm sorry. A um, couple of events looking forward to. The um, foundation event, uh, the Monte Carlo night, is next Friday. Uh, get the right? Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think. December. <laughs> uh, tickets, I believe, are still available up to this Friday. Uh, so if you haven't purchased your ticket yet, it's $40. Uh, please do so. It's a fun night. Um, and Tina, you want to just shout out there so people can hear you what the, 
Mm-hmm. Or, Yeah, we just ask that you try to do so by tomorrow uh, because we have to give a head count over, over to the v- venue. So, I'm sorry, by Friday. Oh, Friday. By Friday. Today's on Wednesday. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, the other winter holiday event coming up is our annual winter celebration luncheon, uh, which is going to be on Thursday, December 20th. Uh, so it's the first time we're announcing that date. Mark your calendars. Uh, for those new to the organization, it's an opportunity at lunch to you know come in. We make a couple hours and just uh, um, as, as an MCIU family try to enjoy the winter holidays. Uh, so that will be December 20th on Thursday, um, and mark your calendars for that. Um, and uh, also we will be uh, working again with the Salvation Army. Uh, so on December 14th, they will be um, taking over Valley Forge ABNC, uh, and they do a toy. Um, they raise, you know, collect toys uh, for families of uh, low income. And then on Monday and Tuesday the following week, which will be, what, 15th, 17th, and 18th, uh, we open up Village Forge ABNC to families uh, in economic distress to come in and pick out toys for their children. Uh, if you haven't seen that event, I highly encourage you to uh, stop down and see it or to volunteer, uh, which is even better uh, because uh, it's just an amazing uh, three days to watch what happens and a number of families that come in this building uh, to help their children uh, in, in, who are in poverty. Uh, it, it's just uh, one of those tearjerker days that's worth seeing. Uh, so uh, please make a point to stop by or find a way to volunteer and support. I, I guess uh, see Tina for if you're interested in volunteering. Right. That wraps up what I have prepared. So I am more than willing to engage in conversations on any topics for anybody who has any questions or comments. Um, I don't see anything coming online, Becky. No. No, maybe. Okay. I usually don't like to keep people longer than I need to, so I'll stay here as long as you want. I, but uh, if there's nothing to ask or talk about, that's a good sign. Um, so I'll just do last call. Any any questions or comments? Okay. If not, uh, I, I think we'll do this again in this after in January, February. I can't remember. Uh, so you know, thank you for taking the time to be here. I certainly enjoy the rest of your lunch, uh, and hope it, you know have a fun trick or treat night tonight for those of you participating in Halloween events. Um, and see you soon. So thanks. Okay.